Hi, everyone. Um, the, my name is Karen Rogers, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I'm going to introduce everybody here in just a minute. Um, but before I get started, I just want to say welcome to everyone out there. Um, it, when we started planning this workshop, this is the inaugural workshop of the PCE3 um, consortium, which is the Prebiotic Chemistry and Early Earth Environments Consortium. When we started planning this and talking about it, we had no idea sort of what the response would be. Um, and we have over 500 registrants um, for the meeting that we're gonna be conducting over the course of the next several weeks. And so I want to start by thanking all of you for your enthusiasm, for coming, for knowing about us, um, for joining the team. Um, the, the success of the PCE3 consortium is not going to come down to the co-leads or the steering committee or the workshop organizers. The success of this group um, and, and really changing how we do um, origins of life science is going to come down to all of you. So before I get started, I just wanted to say welcome and thank you. I can't tell you how excited we are that you're all here. Um, that said, I'm not sure we expected 500 people to join us. And so if, you know, we're a little slow in keeping up with all 500, bear with us. Um, we're trying to work out the logistics. <laughs> we didn't plan for all of you to be so awesome. So, uh, but you are that awesome. We are working out the logistics. We have no innovation and, and Andy um, working with us and they're doing a great job. So um, please be patient while we sort of work on breaking you all out into breakout groups and things like that. Um, but we're really, really excited um, to have you here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen here so you can see where we are, I believe. If I can get a quick heads up from anyone or even a thumbs up from Mandy, perfect, it's thank perfect. you. Okay, so um, this is it. This is the inaugural community workshop, um, part one, building a new foundation for the PCE3 community. I wanna start by introducing a bunch of folks um, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about PCE3, um, who we are, which means sort of also who you are and what we do. Um, and so there are the PCE3 co-leads um, that consist of myself, Ron Krishnamurthy, Tim Lyons, and Lauren Williams, who are all here. And so I want to, on behalf of them, say thank you all for coming. Um, we, of course, you've already met Andy Burnett and his colleague at No Innovation. We've had some workshop um, logistic help from some folks here at RPI, Mara Marset and Brenda Thompson. Um, and I'm, I'm waiting to the end to give this huge thanks and recognition to our workshop organizers, Uli Muller, Jamie L. Silacook, and Dustin Trail. Um, I'm the one talking, but they really did the heavy lift here. And they've just done just an amazing job. And so um, from, from all of us on the co-leads, thank you to the three of you. You've sort of exceeded any expectation we could, we could have ever possibly had. Um, and before I start, I'm gonna talk to you all about what PCE3 is in just a minute. Um, but before we start, and I will say this every Friday, I want to really thank the speakers. Um, for I, I know all or most of you probably watched all of the talks. Um, and again, this was another, um, a, another opportunity where our expectations were just exceeded by miles and miles and miles. The speakers did an amazing job um, sort of giving us sort of these, these primer talks um, with, with all the information we needed in a really accessible way. So I wanna reach out to all the speakers um, this week and for the coming weeks for doing, for doing such a great job. Um, okay, so for those of you um, who don't know what PCE3 is or who've never heard of us, welcome to the consortium. Um, I'm going to read aloud just because it's a little easier. We are a community of science striving to transform the origins of life community by breaking down language and ideological barriers, enhancing communication across the disciplinary divide between the early earth geoscience and prebiotic chemists. So we're here essentially to take planetary science and, and earth scientists and prebiotic chemists and biochemists um, and organic chemists and, and really sort of get our heads together so we can transform how origins of life research is done. Uh, this, this group did not come out of totally nothing. Um, PCE3 is one of five of the recently developed research coordination networks at, um, in, within the NASA Astrobiology Program. 
So Nexus was actually formed quite a number of years ago. And um, since then, there have been four other RCNs formed. We are over here. Uh, our original name was the evolution of the early Earth chemosphere. We have changed our name to PCE3. We think it's a little more catchy. There's also NFOLD, the Network for Life Detection, um, and the Network for Ocean Worlds, which is now. And there is a soon to be coming um, RCN. And so we've sort of made all of these quite a bit cooler looking. So we all have our logos. All of these RCNs um, do sort of work under the same umbrella within the NASA Astrobiology Program. Um, and we're working on keeping up communication across these RCNs. Um, but ours is really um, designed specifically to answer um, one particular scientific goal. But um, so let me tell you a little bit about who we are. Um, the best way for me to do this would be to just turn the camera on all of you and say, that's who we are. Um, we really are the community of people who, who want to sort of get together um, and change how we think about um, prebiotic chemistry um, within the context of early earth environments. But there is a little bit of structure. So there are the co-leads who you're, you're looking at our, our mugs right there. Um, there is the steering committee. Uh, the current membership of the steering committee is on the right of your slide. These are PIs um, from NASA funded programs sort of that fall within the um, scientific umbrella of PCE3. Um, there are all the team members of all of those funded projects, right? And so that's sort of the, the workhorse um, of this community. And then the, the real meat of this community is everyone else, the community at large, and that's, that's all of you. And so we are sort of a, a, a sort of tiered community um, and we're trying to always make this bigger and larger. You can kind of consider these, these bottom two, the steering committee and the co-leads, the people you can come to to get work done. Um, we're, we're here to serve you and the team members in the community at large, are, you're, you're here to get whatever you want and need um, out of this consortium. And so what are we trying to do here? Um, I think that's always a really important thing to talk about. Uh, this is uh, the overall goal of the RCN. It's to investigate the delivery, synthesis, and fate of small molecules under the conditions of the early Earth and the subsequent formation of protobiological molecules and pathways that led to systems harboring the potential for life. Um, I have to read that every time, um, mostly because it took us somewhere around six months to come up with that sentence. And so, you know, we worked really hard on making sure we got that right. I'm not sure we did, um, but largely we're trying to figure out how sort of the chemistry that happened on earth led to life. There it is. Um, so that's really uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do here. But then there is what we're actually doing as a consortium, right? And so among all of the members, um, I've listed some of the um, topics that we cover, including planetary evolution, surface evolution, chemical constraints, inventories, specific sort of surface geologic environments, small molecule stability, and prebiotic chemistry. I think you can largely see that um, the, uh, sort of the chemical emergence of life um, starts in one place and really moves around this circle in terms of, in terms of topics. The numbers that are listed in these circles are, are actually the numbers of um, steering committee members who identify with one or more of these topics. And one of the things you'll note is that we're really heavy in some places and a little light in others, um, particularly specific environments and surface evolution. Um, and that really sort of highlights one of the things we want to do not only here in this workshop, but largely as a consortium, which is to build out this community. And so um, one of the things that we do um, on the steering committee and within the co-leads is try to foster an environment that can um, build this community and really integrate across all of these disciplines. Uh, for those of you who, who work in this field, um, and maybe you, maybe you work on prebiotic complexity you probably don't spend most of your days talking to people who do planetary evolution. Um, and one of our jobs is to sort of integrate across the community and, and, and have everyone sort of communicate a little better. Um, in theory, that will lead to some really interesting and transformative collaborations. We think a lot about how to do cross-disciplinary learning. This workshop is our first big foray into cross-disciplinary learning. 
We're going to go at the very beginning of this. Um, we're going to start with Stellar Evolution. And several weeks from now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to land way down the road in prebiotic complexity. Um, and so we're really doing this cross-disciplinary learning by breaking down language barriers and communication barriers. And so that's, that's our overall goal of what we do. And some of the activities um, that, we've, that we talk a lot about um, and that we've done so far are listed over here on your left. And so I'm not going to go through these in order. Um, I'll talk a little bit about community building in a second. I just want to point out a few logistics. Uh, so PCE3 was one of the foci of the recent ICAR call at NASA. And so that's really an indication that we're trying to, or NASA's trying to expand this community and fund some really novel projects within this overall scientific theme. We of course submitted, the steering committee and other members of the group submitted several white papers to the National Academy, Academy's Planetary Decadal. And so those are being incorporated into the Decadal Survey. Uh, we just recently submitted three sessions to APSICON 2021. And so for those of you who generally go to APSICON, and even if you don't, please check those out because you probably, your work probably fits somewhere in one of those three sessions. So um, a lot of our community engagement um, is, is sort of targeted not toward just the steering committee and the, and the co-leads, but it's really targeted toward building out the community. Um, I think the response today has, is, a, is a good example of how maybe, maybe we're doing that a little bit now, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, one of the things we think a lot about is increasing the diversity within this community, um, including career stage people. So for those of you, who are out there thinking, oh, I don't, I, maybe, I, maybe I don't belong here. You totally belong here. Undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs, please, you all belong here. This community is gonna thrive um, because of your participation. So, so please sort of stick with us. Um, what we're talking about today is community workshops. This is our first one, um, but we will be developing a lecture series. All of the sort of upcoming activities and news um, for the consortium can be found at prebioticchem.info. And so if you wanna keep up with us, um, we're, we're trying to keep that website up to date. Um, we're, we're slowly moving along. So one of the things you'll find on our website is the objectives of PCE3. I'm not gonna read through all of these. and uh, you You're all very capable of reading through them on your own. I just wanna take you through the first one because the first objective is really why we're here. Um, it's to integrate the early earth and prebiotic chemistry communities and break down disciplinary barriers that stymie the pursuit of plausible prebiotic chemistry pathways. That right there is pretty much the entire driving force behind this workshop, right? And so we're trying to um, get everybody started on the same page with these primer talks so we can all sort of move forward from there. So let me tell you a little bit about the structure of this workshop and subsequent workshops. And so this is the first of essentially a two-part workshop, right? So we're going to meet um, between essentially now and the end of November over five different Fridays. All of that collectively is the first part of the workshop, building a new foundation. This first, um, this first section is really designed to um, sort of have a, several primer talks across each of these different disciplines. So again, we can all start on the same page in terms of not only what is known about things like planetary formation or early prebiotic chemistry, but also what is unknown and uncertain, right? So we all as a community can start on the same page. And the, the thinking behind this is that in, our, in the second half of this workshop, what we want to do is then build on that foundation and identify some new directions that we can collectively go as a community in a way that will really transform um, sort of origins of life science. And that um, brings us to essentially our workshop outcomes. Um, and I'm about to give you all your assignments and, and turn you back over to Andy, but just a few more slides. Several things are going to come out of these next several weeks, um, and then both workshops one and two. And so we'll, we will be writing a workshop report. We're hoping to put together a special issue um, that contains essentially the, the 
um, the content of these primer talks. So we all have this to refer to later in our life. Um, but in addition, one of the things we're asking you to do in the breakouts, which are coming very soon, is we're asking you to think about what research directions we need to go into next, right? What questions do you still have about stellar evolution or Hadean geodynamics? Um, what still needs to be known in order to move um, the origins of life community forward? And so a lot of what we're doing in the breakouts is forming that foundation for the next workshop, which is new research directions. Um, and in theory, those will um, provide sort of new critical and innovative questions um, for all of us, for all of us to sort of focus on. And so you're here because you've, you've watched all of these primer talks um, and you have an assignment, right? So we're not, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking. I have like two or three slides left and then we're going to put you all to work. Um, and I want to be very clear about what the breakout session deliverables are. Again, we're trying to figure out what the most important um, next research directions are, particularly within the disciplines that were covered in the five talks that you all watched this week. Um, and so that's the earliest planetary formation in, the, in those five talks you watch. And so here's what we'd like you to do as you go into your breakouts. Um, and, and you will all, Andy will tell you this, you will all get a Google Doc um, sort of to, to record all of this information so you don't have to um, worry about the format. But we'd like to capture everyone's questions. So we asked you to do this after you watched the talks, come up with some questions that you thought were most important within this theme of earliest planetary formation. The first thing we'd like you to do is to capture all of those thoughts. We think that everybody's question and everybody's thoughts here in this very diverse group is really important. So we'd like you to get all of that first. Um, and then we want you to spend the rest of the time in what I can imagine will be a very robust discussion, trying to figure out what your particular breakout group thinks are the most important, or the three most important questions. And there's a place on the Google Doc for you to record that. I want to remind you that you should particularly focus on the theme of this week, which is earliest planetary formation. Um, we have four other weeks after this that we can focus on sort of the rest of the themes. And so for those of you who, who might be more on the organic chemistry side of things um, or um, in the prebiotic complexity side of things, you might be thinking, well, I don't have a place um, in these breakout groups talking about stellar evolution or Hadean geodynamics. It turns out that your thoughts are the exact ones that we're looking for, right? Most stellar evolution people know what they want to know about stellar evolution next, right? That's, that's not the, the, the crux of what PCE3 does. What we're really looking to do is trying to figure out what each sort of side needs from one another in order to move the overall research direction of the community forward. And so it's really, for those of you that are outside this particular theme, um, we really want to know what your questions are about the earliest um, planetary formation. So we've written some example questions here, right? So you might um, ask, for instance, when did subaerial landmass, uh, either via tectonics or um, impacts, emerge from the oceans? And perhaps at that time, what was the composition of the crust, the atmosphere, and surface water? Um, perhaps um, you think about photochemistry or surface chemistry, and so uh, you might be interested in the evolving UV environment, right? The UV environment was not constant through the Hadean, but changing, and how does that affect the creation and destruction of organic molecules? You might be able to figure that out if you knew what that evolving UV environment was. Um, we have a few others here. How, does planetary, uh, how do planetary evolution models impact the volatile flux to planets? We heard a lot um, in these talks about volatiles and how Earth essentially accumulated its volatile in inventory. Um, one of the things that we learned about was essentially how and when Earth got all of its carbon. And so you might be interested in um, having a better understanding of how Earth's carbon reservoirs evolve and become available for prebiotic chemistry. Um, and one of the things that um, I, I added this question, sorry, co-leads and workshop organizers, I, I went rogue this morning. Um, but you know, we, we learned, of course, that immediately after the moon forming event, 
right? That the rotation of the earth was quite a bit faster and, and days and nights were, were coming very quickly. Um, and so the, the length of the day um, was very, very short. Of course, it's very long now. And so for those who think about things like wet dry cycles, which are dependent on this sort of rate of rotation, um, you might not only want to know what the length of the day was, but how that rate changed during the Hadean, right? Because a bunch of other things were changing during the Hadean as well. And so those are the sorts of questions um, that we'd like you to think about. I imagine you all probably have much better questions. And so um, we're interested in what your questions are, but we wanted to, to give you some examples. So finally, we have the rules of the road when you get into your breakout sessions. Um, please everybody just introduce yourselves. Um, make sure you have a breakout leader and a scribe. If you don't have one assigned, pick one. You're all very good at this, um, feel free. And then the first thing we wanna make sure is that everyone has a chance to talk. So please um, let everyone sort of get their questions out there uninterrupted um, before the really intense discussion starts. So make sure you get everybody's questions sort of recorded, let everyone talk, be very sort of kind and open with each other if you can. Um, we want this to be a very robust discussion that everyone can participate in. And then the only other thing we ask is that you try and get everything recorded in those Google documents. That's essentially what we have as a record for this entire workshop. Um, and we've got to make sense of it later. So the, the more you can do to provide um, a, a, a good recording and a good capture of, of these breakout discussions is going to be really very helpful to us. Um, we expect you to go off for about 90 minutes. Stay as long as you want. If, if you want to go for hours, please feel free and um, talk with each other. Um, and I will leave you on the slide that I've already showed you, which is what your deliverables are. These are also in your Google Doc, um, but please keep this in mind um, as you go ahead and go forward. So with that, I am going to stop sharing and give it back to Andy.